Hello viewers. Today we are kicking off with our new topic that is on decision making under uncertainty. And we've completed the decision making under risk where we had probabilities, where we had perfect information, where we had options of getting perfect information. So since that is completed, then now we, we, we need to look at a situation where we can't actually have anything that is going to help us know the outcome of any given event. So when we are looking at decision-making under uncertainty, here, what we basically look at is that the decision maker doesn't have probabilities, doesn't have per perfect information, and we need to see how is the decision maker going to make decisions or what are some of the decision making criteria the decision maker is going to use if at all he doesn't have probabilities and he doesn't have perfect information. It means we are basically, we don't have any chance that we can base on to say that maybe we can use this, maybe this can happen, and we have maybe a range in which it may happen, but we have nothing. So there are three criteria that we use here. We have a max mean criteria, we have a max max criteria and a min max regret criteria. Others call it min max criteria or regret criteria. And others combine it min max regret criteria. So those are the three criteria or decision making criteria that we use. If someone doesn't have probabilities and at the same time the person doesn't have, Perfect, perfect information. We said perfect information is that information that has been analyzed, that has been researched on, and they can help us get the best alternative or get help us to make the best decision. And since we don't have that perfect information, we are just going to use these methods that are going to help us do that. So, so. Maybe to throw more lights on this, because I guess there are some students who actually haven't picked it right, and they, have, they haven't actually understood what we are discussing on. We are basically saying that when, when we are looking at decision-making under uncertainty, what is key here is that we don't actually know the outcome. We don't even know what is going to come out. In other words, we don't have we don't have any idea of the outcome of that given scenario. Secondly, we don't have even perfect information. And thirdly, we cannot have any estimates in terms of probabilities. We can't say they are. 50 chances of us winning. There are 50 chances of us getting this. Or there are 50 chances of 40 or 20 chances of us losing. So no probabilities. We have no idea what will be the outcome. Secondly, we have no perfect information. So if you haven't understood those perfect information, make sure please you do watch the, the other video. The previous video that we made on the perfect and the perfect information because it is key. If you don't understand those, then you, it will be hard for you to pick this one right. So, remember, one of the things that we need to know is that when we have, when we are doing with decision making under risk, we are looking at some of, we, we had the perfect information in the, the first place. And at the same time, we had the probabilities. 
And remember those probabilities, they were helping us to forecast what we should anticipate. But once we don't, you, you find yourself that you don't have probabilities, then it means you can't even guess what is going to happen next. And that's exactly what happens under uncertainty. Uncertainty, we said, we, 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 we explained what we mean here, is that we have nothing, we can't know the outcome. It's like, no one can guess that maybe we are expecting floods in Kampala. If at all you have not based, if, if it's not like in the Eastern Uganda where we used to have that landslide thing, that you have a past record that you can base on and say maybe we expect this to happen in this and this and this period because something has happened some time back and we can reference on that. But here we have nothing. It's just like the way you are saying it's a hill area or we are just on a flat land or a topography which is flat, and you find maybe we are, we are, go, we are gonna experience landslides, floods, all those things when you actually have no idea where they are coming from. So that's the kind of scenario. So what do we want to, what are we supposed to have? Or what, what are we supposed to know? We are supposed to know how we, make decision or we, how we can help the decision maker to make the right decision, even in those periods or in, in those circumstances. So when the examiner gives you a number and is asking about the minimax, max, max, max mean, and he's also giving you probabilities, because it may happen, the examiner may be tricky. The examiner can ask, compute the, the max max, compute the, the minimax, regret, and also compute the max max as the question or as the required. And you find the examiner has given you probabilities. Just know that is a trick. Because whenever they're asking about minimax, max max, min max regret, those ones, we don't use the probabilities, even if they give you those probabilities, because in uncertainty, we don't have any probabilities or we don't have even perfect information. So even if the examiner tricks you and gives you those probabilities, never use them, because under decision-making under uncertainty, we don't have those probabilities. So take note of that. Because we only have those probabilities when it is a decision making under risk. Because for risk, risk you can you 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 can give a chance that maybe there are chances of us losing. There are chances or there are probabilities, but under uncertainty we don't have those. We don't have those probabilities. It's like someone giving you a probability that there are 10% chances that on such and such a road or on, on such and such a street, we are going to, ha to, to, to have a, an accident. It is hard because on which basis, are we, like we have based on which information for you to anticipate that maybe on such and such day on this very same whatever, we expect an accident. It is hard. There is no way someone can just give you a probability of, of, of expecting an accident on a given street. So those are kind of the scenarios that we are looking at here. So we need now to we need now to, to see if you are not going to be using those probabilities, even if they have been given to us. So long as they are asking minimax, max mean, minimax regret, or they're asking max 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 
those ones we don't actually use them. And even if they are given to you in the question, that's there to confuse you. That's basically what I can give as a, a brief background to what we are going to be discussing. So we can kick off with maybe with this max mean criteria and we see what it, what it means. We can kick off with this max mean. We can maybe try to look at some of the, the what these are meaning. Then we see what we can do. A, a max mean, max is representing maximum. Mean is representing minimum. So the full thing is minimax, max mean, or max max, or minimax regret. So that's how they get, they just cut off some of the things. But we are going to see the, the, the application. You will understand that actually these, they are just minimax, maximum and minimum. So for the max mean criteria, in this case, the decision maker first chooses the, mean, the minimum payoff and after chooses the maximum payoff. Hope you can be able to get to that because we first mean, in other words, if it is a max mean, the mean is the one that comes last. So it is the first when the decision maker, the decision maker is making the choice. You first choose the minimum. In other words, you choose the minimum payoffs. And after choosing the minimum payoffs, you choose the maximum. But you are choosing the maximum of who? You are choosing the maximum of the minimum. In other words, what this means is that you have to first look at the payoffs that you have for the different alternatives. Then you select the minimum payoffs for the different alternatives that you have. Those are the ones you first choose. After choosing them, then you pick out the highest values from those minimum values that you've selected. We shall look at a question and we shall be able to grasp this because this is just picking the, the highest value and the lowest value and that's it. Because what this means is that we first pick the lowest value or the minimum values. And at the end of the day, we look at those minimum values that we've selected. We pick the highest values from, the, from them. So, in other words, we are we choosing the best of the of the worst. That's how maybe I can. If you have been given alternatives, maybe you are going to invest in shares. You are going to invest in 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 buying land. You are going to construct factory. You are going to buy machinery, but you find that each of those different projects, investment projects that they have given you, they have given you their net present value or what they expect to get from, the, from them after you have invested in them. They give you what, they, what, you, what you get out after investing those different investment proposals. So what we do we actually first choose those investment ideas that are actually giving us the minimum payoff. After we have done that, then we look at the maximum. We pick out the maximum value from those minimums that we've selected. And this means we are choosing the, the worst the best of the worst alternatives. Because the worst, they are the ones that are giving you the lowest. But if you pick 
the highest value among the lowest values. It means you have selected the best of the worst alternative. And this, all, this rule is always for those pessimist, pessimistic managers who anticipate that the worst case will happen for the each alternative. In other words, with the minimax, for those maybe who haven't got it clearly, for the minimax, you will be wanting to maximize the minimums. In other words, you pick the highest value of the minimums that you, you've selected. That makes us to conclude that you want to always maximize the minimums. And what we do is to first choose the minimum values. And after choosing those minimum values for each alternatives, we choose the maximum. We choose the maximum value from those minimums. Thus, that maximum means we are choosing the, the best. Because maximum is the highest figure, that is the best. But minimum means we are choosing the worst or the lowest value. Therefore, the decision maker first forecasts that the worst is going to happen to him. And if, let's say, maybe you can try to get a little, we go live, we get real life situations or real life examples. That's maybe we can be able to pick it right. If you go into, let's say, business, let's talk about which kind of business. We can talk about a restaurant business. If, if you are running a restaurant business and you are using, you are using a minimax, sorry, a max mean regret, sorry, a max, a max mean criteria as your decision making tool, then this is what is going to happen. You will first of all assume that my business will not start well. If you are using the, the max mean criteria, you will assume, because that's what pessimistic means, you assume that the worst is going to happen all the time. In other words, you anticipate the worst to, to happen. If you are in a restaurant business, you assume that my business is not going to perform well at the start. So if the business is not going to perform well in the start, it means you are not going to get more customers, like you are going to get few customers. And that means that you, you as the, the owner of the business, you are anticipating the worst to happen to you. Because you don't believe that you can start the, the restaurant and you get more customers. You assume that the customers I'm going to get at the start, they are going to be few. But remember, when you have that perspective, it means it is going to limit, to limit you on the kind of building that you are going to get. Because you will assume you will not get more customers and you end up renting a smaller space. So if you anticipate that the worst is going to happen first, then it means your business is going to be in a small place. In other words, you are going to rent a small ground in terms of a small room because you anticipate that you will not have many customers that are going to fill that big room or you will have few customers and those few customers will be able to fit in that small room that you are renting. And we've said that such a kind of person 
or such a kind of a manager is the one that we call the pessimistic manager because for him he always anticipates the worst to happen to him and that's basically the max mean regret sorry the max mean criteria first you you anticipate the worst to happen to you so if you are anticipating the worst to happen to you even the person who would have bought maybe or who would have prepared a lot of food and you are anticipating that maybe these customers are going to come and they will eat all the food you start assuming that they are going to be few you end up preparing small meals that are going to be consumed by the few you anticipate to to get so that's how basic i can explain to i can explain you that the max mean criteria let's try to look at the the max max criteria we said the max means maximum but this is max max it means maximum maximum it is just it is just the opposite of the other one max max it means maximum maximum criteria and if at all you had understood the first one this one would be very easy because if it is a max a maximum maximum criteria it means you aren't spared to you are going to like you be optimistic you look at everything and you say um, if it is a restaurant business you say i'm going to get more customers at the start so you end up renting a bigger building so that's the difference hope you can be able to pick it right so for the max max criteria we are saying in this case the decision maker first chooses the maximum payoff and then he chooses the maximum of the maximum payoffs what this means is that if at all you have the different investment pro projects that we've stated and you are saying you pick out the one that gives you the highest returns when you pick out the one that gives you the highest returns then the second thing you do you choose those you choose the the highest from those highest values in other words you are choosing the best of the best alternatives here what we are trying to mean is that you are looking at the maximums you have selected the highest values first then from the highest value because if you have selected maybe the highest value was maybe 1000 the other one is 500 from the different items then we pick out the highest value among those there must be a value that is bigger or the highest one is the one that we take that is what we call choosing the best of the best alternative and this rule is always for the optimistic managers who anticipate the highest to happen to them in other words for them they are dreaming big everything they expect they, they expect when they start a business they are going to make profits they don't look at the loss component so the question the question will be how best can someone be or which method will be will be the one that is right or that will be fair if at all you are making a decision and uh, because someone someone the worst part is if you anticipate that my business is going to make profit at the at the beginning it means everything you are going to be even 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 in terms of manufacturing you manufacture more goods you manufacture more goods when you actually don't even know where the market is so now the the, the challenge with that is 
What if now that you don't get customers for that? Are you going to eat those products? Because at the end of the day, when they stay for long, they are going to get spoiled. Then the other bad idea with the max mean, where you anticipate the, the worst to happen, is that you may anticipate that I'm not going to get more customers and you rent a small building and it happens that the customers are more than what you have booked. They can't even fit in the room you have rented. It means you have to get another expansion. Like you have to, to expand the building. So there is always that argument that which one is the best, but we are not basically looking at which one is the best. But let's first look at them, the three of them, we understand them. After understanding them, then we can be able to give an argument. Maybe we can give guidance on, on, on which one is the best. We are concluding that that the the max the max max criteria you first choose the maximum and then again you choose the maximum of those highest values that you selected. And we are saying that such a decision maker is always anticipating the best to happen to him. For example, we can maybe conclude with that similar example that we said, the one for a restaurant. If you anticipate the that once you open your business, your restaurant business, then you then you the, the, the customers are going to come. So what is going to be the likely things that the, that, that manager is going to do? Is going to rent a bigger space, is going to prepare more meals, is going to have more workers who are going to supply these, these people. Because that person always anticipates the best to happen to him. So those are some of the effects. Because every decision you make, there is there are repercussions to that, or there are effects that are coming out. It is affecting some other things. Because if you start, if you anticipate big, you are going to have very many people and that means by having very many people, it means you are increasing the wages and salaries. The cost is going to be high on that. So though that's basically the, the way I can differentiate the two. So as I said, we always have that debate. An optimistic manager and a pessimistic manager who would be the best. That's a very strong argument because there are there are things that you need to 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 verify before before you actually answer it. Maybe to 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 just make it a bit brief. In some point, in, in some instances, you may find that the that that a pessimistic manager is good, the one who anticipates the the worst to happen, rather than the optimistic manager. Because optimistic manager expects the best always, but things change. And the problem here is that we don't have any probabilities. And we are not even having perfect information on the things we are doing. So if you aren't to get the best, it's just like the way you are doing gambling. Maybe you have you are betting on teams that you've you've never heard of. Maybe you are, you, 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 you you are betting on a team that that they are just those two teams they're just playing for the first time. You don't have any of their past records. You can't benchmark on the other past performances to see that actually 
A, B, A, A will win or B will win. So it's just that we don't have any past information that we can use. But now, if you anticipate the worst to happen, at least, and at the end of the day, the best happens, then it is fine because if you anticipate the best and the worst happens, then you may you may not you may not take it in your way. Meaning the things are going to be you'll have very many costs. If you anticipate that I'm going to sell more food because food food as it is it is supposed to be taken like if, if you cook more and people can't even consume it it means it will get spoiled by getting spoiled you are making losses even the even what you have sold actually you can't recover even the valuable costs you can't recover them because you have very many stuffs so you have rented a very big building so the the, the loss is very huge but if if you if you, if you are pessimistic, if you anticipate the worst to happen, that's that's in line with the accounting the accounting aspect of the of being prudent. In other words, you don't ask anticipate the best to happen. You anticipate the worst. So if if the other if the best happens, it means it is in your means. Because if you rent a small building and the customers are many, you can relocate and go to another building. You have hired very few staffs. You can pay them off and get more when business is booming. So that's it. But at the same time, the other argument is that there are people who are supporting the, op the being optimistic is that in a sense that as people as people who do business, it is better. They are saying, some of them, they are saying it is better to be pessimistic and others are saying it is better to be optimistic because of that scenario we explained. But there are others who are saying that if you, if, if, if you manage and you are pessimistic, it means you narrow your under your understanding. It means even when you are working, you will you like you will not put in more effort as you should have, because you, after all, you expected losses to happen, or you ex expected the worst to happen to you. So, but if you if you aren't spent, if 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 let's say you 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 assume that the best is going to happen, you are going to put in more effort. You will work very hard. But at the end of the day, I'm seeing it is better to be a pessimistic, at, especially at the end, at the, at the beginning of the business, because you don't have any information, you don't have any probabilities, so it is better you be pessimistic. That is in my opinion. So we can look at maybe the, 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 the last criteria, that is minimax regret. May I call it minimax regret? but others call it minimax criteria. So you may find in certain textbooks, they are saying minimax. Others are saying minimax regret. But the point here, what I want you to understand is a regret. What is a regret? That's what basically I want, to, I want you to understand in this. They are saying that this is, the, this is where the decision maker be, regrets for having not chosen the maximum payoff. In this case, a regret, a regret table will be drawn from which the maximum regret value will be selected. And the minimum of the maximum regret will be selected. So for, for us to maybe to get the definition of a regret, a regret is, is just a difference a difference between a given payoff and the maximum payoff for each state of nature. A regret is like you are, you are regretting. You made a choice. You made a choice that I'm going to stick to 
max mean criteria. I'm going to anticipate the worst to happen. But at the end of the day, you find that you anticipated the loss, but you got a profit. So you are regretting, you would have assumed, you would have gone with a max max, but you ended up going with it. A mean a, a max mean, which means that what are we regretting? We are regretting for the profit you would have earned if at all you had assumed the opposite. When you come to computations, these things are going to look easy, but just understand the 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 logic behind this because some of the things they just look. They just look as if they're hard, but these are very, very, very easy things which are just applicable in, in real life because these are just real life situations. So now let's maybe I maybe I throw more lights on on the min max regret. I put some clarity how it happens. The minimax regret criteria happens as a result of you not have anticipated that the best would happen. If you are a manager, you anticipated that you are going to be getting a loss. This is how it happens. It doesn't happen the other way around. That that if it was because because the other side you are going to be losing. If 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 you anticipated that you are going to be an optimistic manager, you assume that you are going to have the best. And the worst happens. It means there there is no regret because you are making loss. You can't regret for the losses you've made. We only regret for the profits we lost because we are we, we start business to make profit. There is no way I'm going to regret. Of course, the other side is going to be a bad idea, a bad idea because you have made losses. But here I'm just, I'm only regretting because I've lost money. I would have anticipated that at least I'm going to get more customers. So that's the only regret. It is just one sided. The other side can't be a regret. There is no way you are saying, I'm regretting, yet you made a loss. But the only positive aspect that we need to look at here is that that will make a difference between the two is we are regretting for the money that we lost for not assuming the best to happen to us. That is what the regret is all about. So, and this can only happen in the max mean criteria. And that's why you are seeing this heading. The first one it says max mean, but the last one says Minimax, meaning they are just they are just changing minimum maximum. The other one was saying maximum minimum. So that's the difference. We are reversing the other pessimistic manager's approach. That's what we are regretting, and that's why the formula is like like, like that's why the, the the words are written like like that. Mean max. We are trying to reverse the other max mean. In other words, we are regretting that at least we would have taken the other max max criteria. So here, what happens is that we draw a regret table. And that regret table shows the amount we, we would have earned if at all we had anticipated the highest to happen. That's why we are drawing a regret criteria. So this is the this is actually this is the easiest part. Though it is the one that is taking more marks because it has 
an additional item of where you are supposed to draw a great table. So, because we said with the max mean criteria, we anticipate the worst to happen, but instead the best has happened. So, it is at that point that we are going to regret. But we can't regret the other side. We only regret that at least we would have anticipated the best to happen to us. So, you, 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 you could wish maybe that you... Had you had maybe if if you had that restaurant business, you could say, I wish I had maybe hired a, a bigger building or I had rented a bigger space for that restaurant. Because it can it can happen. You can be you can be you can be renting on on a, on a, on, a, on a given floor, maybe on a given building, but the space is only limited. Because you may find that for you, you came and picked a, a smaller room, saying you are not going to have more customers. But you find that you have actually got any customers. But now the space is not there. There is no maybe if if you are to look for another space, it, it is it is going to be outside that environment or it is outside that location. Because you may find when they have already occupied, especially in the busy trading centers, you find when the, when the space is already taken and for you, you picked a smaller room saying that you are not going to, you are not going to earn more. And that's, those are the things we are regretting. So that's, that's the basis or oh, that is the core idea of the minimax regret. So, because now by, by default, when you rent a small, a small space, of course, even the customers will run away. They will come, they will have no way even to park because you you go to a small space. They can't even park there. They can't even fit in the room when they when you are serve, when you are to serve them. So you find that you, the customers are going to be chased away. And there is no way you can leave that location because it is the one that is that is busy for, for, for that kind of business. Because you can run away and you go to a bigger building when there is no one who is actually coming to buy it, and that's a loss. So that's what we can look at as far as those are concerned. But we have a note. We have a note, and that note is concluding who, after understanding these three criteria. Then now we need to make a decision on the other, on the other bigger picture. Who is better? Because if you look at each item in isolation, each of them is right. Because they have reasons as to why they are doing so. But we need to look at the bigger picture. After seeing this minimax regret, we need to make a general conclusion that. Because we are saying, much as someone would love to, to, to be pessimistic, and it is right, because this is true, because it is corresponding with the prudence concept of accounting, where we always anticipate losses or the worst to happen. But this makes people not to work hard. Because if you anticipate losses to happen, of course, you are not going, there is no way you are going to put in more effort. There is no way you are going to be creative. After all, you have, you have actually set law, low standards. You have actually lost, set a low pace for even the employees. They are not going to be like overworking because you set low limits for them. You have set low targets for them. Even the thinking, the creativity of the employees themselves, they are just going to be because they are achieving small targets. So we, we, we always say that it is better you, 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 go, you go with the optimistic mind. You be optimistic because if you are optimistic, we expect that even if things fail, 
at least you tried. Because you know next time where to start improving from. But if you set yourself lower, then it, there is no room for improvement. But you set your standard high, you keep on improving and improving. But if you look at each of those items in isolation, you may find it hard for you to make a decision. But after adding in this third criteria, then now we can basically say it is better to be an optimistic than pessimistic. That is as per management, because this, what we are doing now is management decisions and control. This is MDC. Management is always looking at ways how best they can actually make decisions. And that's why we are making decisions after we have analyzed so many things and we reach at a conclusion. When you look when you look at the three criteria, it's only deliberate that starts with the mean. I'll explain that one. It's when you look at these criteria, it is only the mean max regret that starts with mean or that starts with minimum. That's that's how you can distinguish some of these. Because an exam may come when they have not specified the criteria and it's you to mention them and you don't actually remember them. So as a way of you remembering this, we can repeat that it is only that that has the regret which starts with the mean. But all the, the, the other two criteria are starting with max. So that is very important. Because we say the, exa the, the, the examiner may ask for a minimax criteria, and then you should know that they are the same with if they are told you may be to compute a regret. Because I, I told you in some books they write minimax criteria and they stop there. Because when they stop there, it means they they are meaning the same thing because it is only that mini max regret that starts with mean. Others are starting with max. So I'm just giving you this trick because some of these textbooks are going to be coming out, giving you different information and you'll say, you'll find it not, mis not matching, but you have to just use that as a, a trick to identify those. So even if the examiner tells you to compute regret, because it is only the last one that has a regret. The rest doesn't have regret. It means you only compute the regret table, that criteria, third criteria. So I think that's 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 enough for, for today. We can maybe try to look at a simple simulation. This is simulation. We have a simulation here, but we are going to look at into we are going to look at it in the next video because I don't want to make it too long for you to find it a bit confusing if it is too long. So I beg to stop here. Let's meet in the next video as we are, we are trying to look at a simple simulation that is going to help us understand what we've been discussing because we have made more, we have made this paper more theoretical than how practical it is. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, bye for now.